Hi, welcome back to my read aloud for the novel Inside Out by Terry Truman. Today we are going to start the second installment. Let's see. Um, before we read, we do want to think about our predictions that we've made. So we've already made a prediction at the beginning when I first read this. I thought that Zack was going to be an evil genius because the back of the book said his mind was dangerous. But as I continued reading the story, it seems like maybe the danger is going to be because of his hallucinations. He doesn't seem evil and he's not really a genius. He gets very confused frequently. Um, after reading chapter one, I think that people are going to start getting really upset, crying and screaming because the cops have just shown up and the robbers have directed everyone to go into the back room. Um, I guess while I'm reading today, I'm going to try and find out if that is true. And let's see, I'm trying to make another prediction after we read later. While we were reading, the strategy that I wanted us to focus on was that we need to expect characters to be complicated and to show more than one trait. So while I was reading, I took some notes on some traits for Zach, our main character. For example, he's socially awkward. Um, he doesn't seem to understand social cues very well. And also he hallucinates, which is a pretty big deal. He, he sees things that aren't there and sometimes he thinks that things that are happening aren't actually real. So that's a problem. For today's reading, we wanted to focus on the traits of some of our minor characters. So while I'm reading, I am going to be thinking about, I've decided to go with the thieves um, and try and learn more about them as people. I actually have already thought a little bit about this and I took down some notes based on what we've already read. Okay, so this time while we're reading, I am going to be looking at the traits of the thieves who are minor characters. Um, so far I've noticed that we have the older thief who is maybe 17 and the younger thief um, he was a couple of years younger, but I wasn't sure what age to say, maybe 15, I don't know. Um, he says that, I feel like he's anxious, though, as a person. Um, now, this probably has something to do with the fact that he is robbing a store, but he seems more anxious than the older thief. For example, his hand is shaking while he points the gun. Zach noticed that. Also, he seems more agitated by Zach's outbursts. So when Zach starts talking and they want him to just be quiet, be quiet, he keeps yelling at him to shut up. He can't handle Zach interrupting what he is expecting to have happen. So when I open up chapter two, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna read through and I'll hopefully find some more information about my minor characters. But the first thing I notice uh, at the beginning of chapter two is that the text at the top looks different than the rest of the text. It looks like it might be something that was typed on a typewriter. It looks maybe professional. Um, it doesn't seem like it's part of the actual story that we're reading now. So let's just read that to you. Dr. Cal Curtis, Medical School Training. Notes. Psychotic mental disorders such as schizophrenia affect the way people understand things and how they act in social settings. Sometimes these patients grasp what is happening around them, but most of the time they get very confused. They can be aware one moment and unaware the next. And then it, it fades out. So it seems to me, first of all, I remember that Zach mentioned a Dr. Kurt. So firstly, I'm wondering if Dr. Kurt is Dr. Cal Curtis and he just shortens it. Secondly, I feel like what they're saying kind of describes Zach so far. And I feel like it's also setting us up to expect more hallucinations because it's saying he can be aware one moment, which it seems like right now Zach is aware of what's happening. And now I'm thinking possibly moving forward he might be unaware of what's happening. Something might change for him. Okay. 
So with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and continue reading. I'll start with chapter two. Okay. I wish I had one of those maple bars. If I were a robber, I'd take the money and the maple bars. Squish, wish, squish, wish. I bet you wish you could squish a wish. Maybe I would if I know what the hell that meant. Wastoid. I know what that means. But lucky for me, it's not dirtbag or rat. I hate when they show up. The kids with the guns make us all sit on the floor. The younger kid peeks out the door at all the cops and the cop cars, then turns back to the older kid and says, What are we going to do? What are we going to do? The cops are all over the place. They'll blow our heads off. The older kid interrupts. They won't. Just relax. We've got all these people in here with us. The cops don't want them to get hurt, so they won't do anything. He pauses a second, then says to all of us, Just sit there and shut up and you won't get hurt. I want to stay quiet. I want to relax, but I can't help myself. What's your names? I ask. The older kid looks at me. You don't want to know our names, he says. Yes, I do, I say back. Otherwise, I don't know what to call you. Dang, says the younger gunman. We had to pick a place with a retard in it. The older kid turns to the younger one and says, chill. The older kid turns to me again and says, you can call me Frosty and him Stormy, okay? Wow, I say, really impressed. Neat names. Are those your real names? What are your last names? Are you brothers? Wouldn't it be cool if your last name was Day, you know, like Frosty Day and Stormy Day? There's a loud sound outside the building, out in front. It's more sirens from more police cars. The older kid, Frosty, ignores the new police sounds and looks at me funny. He says, what's wrong with you? I say, I'm not retarded. Stormy laughs and say, yeah, right. I say, no, honest, I'm not. Actually, I'm pretty smart. Like, ask me anything about school subjects, like math or history. Ask me the number of any president. I wonder if the president of the United States is here right now. That's stupid again. He's out trying to protect the free world. By the way, what's so free about the free world? I mean, everything I see costs money. I say, come on, just pick any number of president between one and 43. Frosty doesn't think about it for very long. 17. He is looking out the door again. 17, I say. Andrew Johnson, 17th president of the United States of America, assumed office upon the assassination by John Wilkes Booth of the 16th president, Abraham Lincoln. Frosty interrupts me. Okay, you're not a retard, but just shut up, okay? I've got to pay attention or someone could get hurt for real. There's more sounds of policemen yelling things to each other and running around outside. Okay, I say. Frosty pauses for a few seconds then says to all of us, we don't want to have to kill you, okay? We want to try and get out of this, so do what we say when we say it and just shut up. When Frosty says the thing about killing us, the little girl sitting with her mom starts to cry. She's really a cute little girl, a lot smaller than her mom. That's another stupid thing to say, isn't it? But that's what I notice. She's little and her mom is bigger. Anyway, the little girl is cute, but I think she's real scared. I remember being scared when I was little, before I got sick. I don't get scared now. As the little girl's crying, her face is all scrunched up and her lips are quivering. Her hands are shaking too, little hands with blue fingernail polish. Yep, she's scared. Stormy looks down at the little girl and says to her, Hey! When she looks up at him, he says, We're not going to hurt you, I promise. The little girl smiles at him, and he smiles back at her. While I'm sitting here, shutting up, I'm thinking it's hard for me to, excuse me, I'm thinking about not understanding things faster. I guess in a way I'm embarrassed about it, but I'm happy to still feel embarrassed. Dr. Kurt 
says a lot of people with my kind of brain don't have feelings at all. He says that would be worse. I guess if he says so, it must be true. One thing for sure though, I got it bad enough the way I am now. I don't need worse. Stormy asks Frosty again, how are we going to get out of this? His voice is shaky. I don't know, says Frosty. Stormy says, but what about mom? What about... Frosty interrupts. Just shut up a second, okay? Just chill. But, Stormy begins, but when he looks at Frosty, he stops talking. Suddenly, there's more loud sounds of cops outside yelling. Frosty and Stormy look up at each other, but don't say anything. We're all so crowded together, but it's okay, because I'm sitting next to one of the old ladies who has on some perfume that smells really nice. You smell nice, I say to her. She tries to smile, but her mouth can't quite make it. She has kind of pink purple hair and real wrinkly skin. I mean, really wrinkly. I wonder if she's a hundred years old. Stupid again, hardly anybody's that old. So I ask her, how old are you? Stormy says to me, geez, please shut up. I forgot I wasn't supposed to talk, or maybe I thought that was that just counted out in the other room near the maple bars. I guess it counts here too. Oops, I say. Frosty says, it's okay, just try and be quiet, all right? I nod. Frosty kind of half smiles at me, but he can't get his mouth to make a smile any better than the old lady could a few seconds ago. I guess he's scared too. There's a lot more noise outside the coffee shop. Policemen yell things to each other and their sirens blare and people holler. There's the regular traffic sounds that I always notice when I'm waiting here for my mom. But now there's police radio sounds, running footsteps and some beep, beep, beep sounds. Like when a truck is backing up. Wing, wong, wing, wong, wong, gong. I wonder if the feeling I'm feeling right now is fear. It's hard for me to know what feeling is appropriate with what's going on. I'm not appropriate sometimes. Sometimes I'm inappropriate. Wong, wong, zing, zong, waist, oid, wong, gong. Suddenly, I hear this clicking sound. Click, click, click. At first, I'm not sure where it's coming from. But when I look around, I see that it's Stormy's gun. Stormy is pulling the hammer on his gun, the thing you cock it with, back with his thumb, then easing it back down over and over again. Every time he pulls it back, then eases it forward, it goes click. I look at the gun for a while, then up at Stormy's face. He's staring right at me. I've been on the other end of a gun before. I didn't like it much then. I still don't. Okay, so we've been given names. We've got Frosty as the older one, who's maybe 17. We've got Stormy, who I think could be maybe 15 years old. Um, during the reading, I was thinking about Frosty, and I feel like he seems like a patient person. Um, he keeps answering all of Zach's questions, even though he's told him multiple times to stop talking. He told him names. He didn't need to give names, but he made up names for them to appease Zach. Um, and I'm also thinking about when Zach asked him to pick a number for the president. He picked a number. He didn't have to listen to Zach talking about presidents, but he did that and I feel like overall my impression of a person who acts like that in a stressful situation is that they are patient. For Stormy, I added in um, that he's caring. Now, I think outwardly he seems kind of really mean, right? He's He's been rude to Zach. He called him retarded, which is not nice. Um, he's yelling at him to shut up a lot. But what I think is happening is that Zach is annoying him in a situation where he is very stressed out, obviously. Okay. 
But when the little girl starts crying, he smiled at her and promised that he wouldn't hurt her. He was trying to make her feel better. So clearly, some part of him is a caring individual. And I wrote that because I think it's important. I feel like it might come up again. Um, I actually put an extra little note here. Um, I think that these two are brothers. I think that because, you know, they're about the same age. And at one point, Stormy says, but what about mom? So they must, you know, they must have the same mother because you don't call, like you might say, what about my mom? You wouldn't say mom if you're, unless you're talking about your sister or brother because that's their mom too. Anyway, I think they're brothers. Um, we had our prediction earlier. Let's look at that. Okay. So our prediction, or my prediction, I should say, was that people were going to start maybe freaking out a little bit uh, and someone could get hurt. Uh, mostly, it looked like everyone kept calm except for the little girl and Stormy was trying to make her feel better. So I wasn't perfect on my prediction again either, um, but it's still important to make predictions. So I'm going to try and see what I think might happen in the next segment that we read. And let's see what I came up with. Okay. So after chapter two, I'm making a new prediction and I think that the police are probably going to try and talk to Frosty and Stormy. I think that because a lot of a lot more police have arrived during this chapter and also Zach hears the sounds of police radios. So now I'm sort of imagining like any sort of uh, hostage situation that I've ever seen on TV on TV shows. They have that blow horn where they're yelling to the uh, to the hostage hold the robbers or whatever. Um, trying to get hostages out of the, the crime scene. So that's what I'm kind of imagining right now. I'm trying to visualize this and I feel like they're going to start yelling or talking to the boys. They might also call. Sometimes I know on TV they call on the phone so they could call the uh, coffee shop and try and get in touch with them that way. I guess we'll see. That's my prediction. Um, all right, I hope that you are enjoying this. I will be posting the next section uh, shortly. Thank you.